morning everybody from the dashboard of my truck near Ann Arbor, Michigan on our way up to Toronto, Ontario. Just starting our day here. We only have about ah, five hours to go. It's a very short day today. It should be a good day. What's this guy doing parked here? Uh, of course I got someone coming up right beside me. Not letting me over. Okay. Not a place to park and sleep. 200 meters. Take the entrance to the ride on I-94 East. So we're going east towards Ann Arbor. We're just outside that town right now. Get ourselves onto the freeway here and start making our way up to Canada with our essential freight. the Blue Water Bridge here from Port Huron, Michigan into Sarnia, Ontario. They're not accepting cash for the toll payment to get across this bridge. Debit or credit card only. So from here we have about another three hours or so, a little over three hours to get to where we need to go. Depending on traffic, we got to go through Toronto. Only trucks crossing the border at this time, so this bridge and this border crossing is so quiet. It's really nice. Okay, so we sort of go up into the cloud and we come down on the other side on Canadian soil. I think the Americans own these bridges. I wouldn't be surprised, but maybe we do. One kilometer, slide right on. Lake on Circle Tweet. Highway 402. Maybe it's a joint thing, but you'd think one or the other would have to own the bridge. But this side of the bridge Crossing is Canada. Border, entering Ontario. I already told them, Karen. But pay attention. Welcome to Canada. Bienvenue au Canada. Federal Bridge Corporation. Oh, maybe this is a Canadian bridge. And just like that, we're back in Canada. Feeling good. Very quiet here, this border city. So this is Sarnia, Ontario. This road is usually pretty busy here, off to my left, those roads. Interesting to see the difference. We gotta keep things moving. Somebody needs their genie lift truck. At least that's what I call it. Whatever this thing is that I'm hauling, the Genie lift Continue truck. Continue on this road for 152 kilometers. The brand name is Genie, and it lifts people, and it's sort of like a truck, so... The Genie lift truck is what I'm calling it. Oh boy, that building needs some TLC. Oh dear. I thought we left Michigan. Let's see if we can find a decent parking spot here. Looks like we will. We're at the London, Ontario Flying J. Perfect, right here. Right before that guy rolls through here. Nice, very nice. Right by the garbage can, good. I need to throw out my garbage. Go in here and grab a coffee. So the border crossing wasn't all that special or anything. They asked if I was sick. And I told them no, I'm feeling good. Asked all the regular questions and off I went. I guess for commercial traffic, they're trying to 
keep us moving. So I'm trying to speed us through. But I'm surprised that they don't have some kind of like, uh, you know, they have those uh, in some countries, a lot of countries around the world, they have these uh, thermometers that don't, touchless thermometers, is that what they call them? They just point it at your forehead and it'll tell them if you have a fever or not. I'm, I'm surprised we don't have that at our border crossings, even for the drivers. Because if anybody's crossing with a fever, maybe they should be told, okay, you gotta self-isolate. Even though you're a trucker, you need to go and self-isolate. You're sick, you have a fever. I thought for sure something like that. No, they just asked if I was sick. Well, no, I'm, I'm actually feeling good, but if I wasn't and I lied, would you know? I don't know, I would support those uh, electronic temperature readers. They don't have to touch us or anything. All they'd have to do is get us to lean out the window or something and just point it at our forehead and it just checks to see what the temperature of your head is. I thought that would be common sense. But I guess I'm, I'm just another, what do they call it, a cog in the machine? I'm just another, uh, just a lowly peasant. But I'm an essential peasant. I think it's kind of cool how Ontario paints the lines orange like it was back there in their construction zones. It sort of makes the driver more alert to, okay, there might be, you know, sudden changes in the lanes or something. You know, we're in a construction zone. And I like it. We still got cones out here, but looks like this isn't as important of a construction zone. I don't know. We're just coming up to the greater Toronto area here. This is the most populated spot in Canada. I live very far away from here, but for today we're going to be here amongst all these other people and their germs. I'm just kidding, you guys are great. Some of you need to wash your hands though, just saying. Go wash your hands. I gotta get to the other side of Toronto. Toronto is sort of like a, a long city. If you look on a map, it's built along the lake. So it's uh, a long city rather than, you know, spread out from one central point, it's spread out along the lake. Oh, here's these orange lines again, see? Fancy. So we gotta get to the other side. I believe it's the Scarborough, which is like a borough or a suburb or another city within Toronto. It's all Toronto to me. And I can go park right at the customer. They're gonna be there at 6 a.m. tomorrow. So that's nice. I can get right to it first thing without having to wait around or make my way over. The truck has been running all right today. St. Catharines to pick up our load. It's going to be a wide load, so that's kind of cool. Not too wide, just 10 foot wide. And we're taking it all the way to Alberta, like I thought. So to deliver the load, I'm going to have to shave off my magnificent beard. And I apologize in advance for that, but uh, feel free to laugh at me because I know I look ridiculous without it. But in order to get paid, I got to deliver the load. I could get someone else to deliver it from Winnipeg, but I want the pennies, so I'm gonna take the pennies, the nickels, the dimes, and maybe even a loony, and I'll deliver it, and uh, I'll just shave. Not excited about it, but whatever. At least I don't got like a big great beard. I'm not losing a huge big beard. Eh, I'll be fine, it'll grow back.
Alley Parkway. Time for us to get off the freeway. Keep right, you said? Alright. City buses here, like the one coming up on the left, they got like blue LED lights on the front. Bright blue lights, almost looks like a cop. They're police buses. Or not. He's got his park anywhere and get away with it, lights flashing too. Can I get around here? Can I get around here? Oh, construction! Oh, my favorite! That's awesome! Next, you want me to turn left? Okay, so I gotta go. In 200 meters, Whoa. turn left on. That is not least. Can I even turn left with all this construction? Nope. Oh, this is fantastic. No left turns right now. Oh, man, what kind of mess did I get myself into? Oh, man. No left turns. Now what? Karen, look at what you've done. what happens when I trust her too much. I checked her work, but I didn't. It looked like the right exit to me. So I trusted her. In one kilometer, what make a you turn if possible. No, no, no. We're going to go all the way to the end here and get back on the freeway and come back. Looks like I can go all the way to... Oh, boy. It's, it's about two miles up. I feel bad for you guys here. I feel for you. All the, the people 
self-quarantining in these little boxes. Man, that must be tough. I can understand all the posts online about people getting bored. Yeah, if I lived in a small place like that, I'd be bored too. Ugh, it's cheaper to live out in the country, I'm just saying. In 600 meters, make a U-turn if possible. It's not possible, Karen. Shut your mouth. I'm going all the way back to the freeway now. For a lot of people, like all the people who live here, it's not really, uh, it wouldn't really be cheaper for them to live in the country because all their jobs are here in the city, right? And they'd have to commute a long ways in. If I had to commute into the city every day, it wouldn't be worth it. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I'd move to the city then. I just like being, being a little hard on them. I'm just having fun. Well, we eventually found the customer there where I'm delivering to and I don't know, I looked around and I'm like, hmm. I don't know this neighborhood. I don't know if I feel comfortable in this neighborhood. I don't want to sleep in this neighborhood. I, I just didn't know it. I mean, I, I don't know the area. So there wasn't really any good parking anywhere on the street. Uh, everywhere I went, it said no parking, no parking. Like typical. You can never find anywhere to park. So I went down the road to Pickering, Ontario, where there's a, a Petro Pass truck stop. I've stopped here many times in the past before. And uh, I'm just going to sleep here. I'm going to go to bed almost right away. I'm just going to read my book a bit and then head off to Dream World. We'll be up early tomorrow morning to go unload this, uh, uh, I think it's called an aerial platform. No. Yeah, aerial platform genie. Or a genie lift truck. I don't know what it is. We're going to deliver it and get it off my trailer tomorrow morning and then run over to St. Catharines, load up some oversized steel, which is going to be really heavy. Hopefully my truck is up to the task. I know I am. And we're going to pull that on out to Alberta. Don't forget to subscribe and click one of these videos around here on the screen. It'll take you to yesterday's and another video that I uh, thought you might like. We'll see you tomorrow.